All right. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in to In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. It's a lovely day, so good to see every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Hey, start a watch party this morning. Let everybody know that you're on today. Hey, shout out to my good friend, Bishop Adrian Lavelle, who's on this morning. Shout out to you. Miss Kita Kita is watching with us. Robert Perryman is watching with us today. Miss Willa Robinson is with us this morning. Hey, my daughter Ashley Perryman is with us today. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Get other people to come on and be a part of it in the backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Hey, you are free to start a watch party, so get to it today. All right, shout out to Miss Abigail Yates this morning. Good to see you. Hey, Miss Nadine Lewis is with us today. Miss Bambi is rocking with us this morning, too. Miss Tiffany Barnes is with us today. Shout out to you. Hey, Tony Johnson, good to see you, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. As you can see, the sun is shining very bright here in Palmdale. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day here. And uh, it is a little hot out here, too. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. Mother Sandra Jones is rocking with us tonight, today. Shout out to you. Good to see you. Listen, let's get ready to get into it today. But while we get ready to get into it, make sure you get your coffee, your water, your juice, your tea, whatever you drink. And make sure it's non-alcoholic because this is a Christian broadcast. Listen, but let's get ready. But listen, I want you to share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to be on, all right? Hey, shout out to Miss Bam who's on this morning as well. Love you guys. Appreciate you. But let's get to it. You know, about maybe about a year and a half ago, um, I was uh, had to go get some tires put on my car. And um, they were taking a little bit longer than usual to put the tires on my car. And I ended up uh, getting to pick up my daughter from school about five or six minutes late. And, uh, and that's not really characteristic of me. I'm normally there on time, but I'm about five or six minutes late. And... Um, and when I get there, I got to fight through all of the traffic of picking up the, you know, to pick up my daughter because all these cars are there. You got to let these kids cross the street. And so now when I get up there and my daughter sees me, she comes to the car and she says to me, Dad, I thought you forgot about me. And I said, no, nah, sweetheart, I didn't forget about you. And I told her, I said, they were putting tires on the car, so it took a little bit longer than what I thought. And it just... I just couldn't get out of there on time. I apologize. Now, I didn't have, she didn't have a cell phone for me to call her, but she knows to be at a certain spot at a certain time for me to get her. But because I wasn't on time, she felt that I had forgotten her. There are many of you today, it seems as if maybe God has not showed up for you in a timely manner. It seems as if God has abandoned you. He's forgotten you because you're going through some things in life. Maybe you're going through health challenges. Maybe you're going through financial challenges. Maybe you're going through some issues on your job. Maybe you're going through some family problems, and it almost seems as if that God has forgotten you. I came to tell you this morning that he has not forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you at all, even though it may seem like it. You're in this dark place in your life right now because you're in a battle. You're battling whether it's a health crisis, whether it's a financial crisis, a family crisis, or a financial crisis. You're in, the, you're in a crisis, and you're battling, and it seems as if God has abandoned you, and you're all by yourself. It's in this place of abandonment <laughs> that the enemy will start talking to you. The enemy will start to tell you that people don't care, that people don't love you, that people uh, uh, don't want to be with you, and you will start to remember the things that you did for other people, how you supported them, how you were there for them. And now all of a sudden I'm in this dark place and there is nobody there for me. I'm praying to God and he's not answering my prayer. Where is God in the midst of all of this? And what the enemy is doing is he's playing with your mind in the midst of your dark place to make you think, that God has forgotten you. But the reality is God has not forgotten you. The Bible says in Psalms 115 that God has been mindful of us. The Bible said that he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. The Bible said he will bless, them. He will bless us both, both small and great. The Lord now has been mindful of you. Don't ever think that because you're going through something that God is not there for you. For some of you, you're going through some things and you're not realizing what God is doing. He's gone before you to clear off the land, to make your crooked path straight. He's gone before you to transform and change some things so that when you arrive, you'll arrive in peace. See, right now you're, you're faced with difficulty, you're faced with challenges, and it seems as if he's forgotten you. 
He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He will never forget you. It's not in his nature to forget you. It's not in his heart to forgive you. His love won't let him forget you. So your whole mindset today must be, God has not forgotten me. You have to fight off this depression. You have to fight off the, the sickness and disease. You got to fight off what the devil is saying to you because he will say on a continuous basis that God has forgotten you because of some things that you may have done wrong. May I tell you that every one of us have done some things that we may not should have done or we should not have done. We've done some things, but that does not mean that God has forgotten us because of the mishaps, the mistakes, and the mess up that we have made in life. He's not forgotten us. We are his children, and because you are the child of God, he's always going to come to your rescue. But for some of us, he has to allow us to grow in the dark so that he can bless us in the light. Maybe you're in the dark season of your life, and you allow, and God is showing you who he really is in this season of your life. But right now, you can't see it because things are too dark. May I tell you that before it gets its brightest, it always gets its darkest. <laughs> May I tell you that before, be, 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 when morning comes, it doesn't mean that morning shows up when the sun shines. But morning shows up when it's at its darkest hour of the night. And may I tell you today that in your darkest hour, light is still present. And that light is Jesus Christ. You have not been forgotten. He has not forgotten you. He will always show up. He will always show out. He will always do something incredible and amazing in your life. He's not forgotten you. So don't you let the devil tell you another day in your life that God has forgotten you. Anytime the devil brings up your past, you have to start telling the devil, that's just it. It's just my past. It's not my today. It's not my now. It's not who I am today. God has made me a new creature in him. So my past is just my past. He's not forgotten me. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel chapter number 9 that David is now king. And here he is now. He, he's king. And you would think that David would be happy and excited being king. But he's not happy. He's not excited. And the reason that he's not happy and not excited because he understands that. I got love for Jonathan. There's got to be somebody of the house of Saul, somebody of Jonathan's house that's left behind that I can show mercy and God's grace to. And all of a sudden now, he asked the question, he asked Ziba, is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? He said, yeah, Jonathan had a son. His, his name is Mephibosheth. David said, where is he at? He says, he's down in Lodabar. All of a sudden now, David says, send men down there to get him. We're going to get him. And they got, can you imagine David's caravan pulling up down in the load of all? And he looks at Mephibosheth and he asks him, are you Mephibosheth? He says, yeah. He says, uh, fear not, don't be afraid. Because Mephibosheth had bowed his head to David, said, don't be afraid, I'm not going to kill you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the kindness of the Lord. Here Mephibosheth is lame in both of his feet because when David is becoming king now, and the people are threatening that David is coming to take over everything. He's going to kill everybody. Mephibosheth is a little baby, and all of a sudden, his nurse drops him and messes up his feet. So now David cannot, I mean, now Mephibosheth can't walk. He's lame, and he's living beneath his privileges down in the loader bar, thinking that don't nobody care about him, thinking that nobody is there for him. And the reality is he didn't realize that God had not forgotten him. And all of a sudden, J J David shows up. He says, I'm getting ready to show kindness to you. You're going to eat at my table for the rest of your life. Everything that your grandfather had, everything your daddy had, we're getting ready to restore it back to you. Ziba, you and your 15 children and your 20 servants are going to take care of it, going to take care of his land for him. We're going to make sure that he got it all back. We're going to make sure that he can begin again, that he can start all over again. We're going to make sure that he's going to eat at my table for the rest of his life. Don't you ever think that God has forgotten you because you have lost some things in your life. Maybe you have lost the car. Maybe it's been repoed. Maybe you've been foreclosed on. Maybe this has happened or maybe that. That has happened to you, but don't you ever think that God has forgotten you. He loves you too much to forget you. He loves you too much to forget you. And some of you say, but pastor, he didn't show up when I needed him. I like how Bishop T.D. J. says it like this. He said, God loves you enough to be late. He loves you enough to be late. And there are many people saying, but pastor, I needed him to show up right then and then. No, you needed him to show up when he showed up. Because when God shows up, he redeems the time in your life. When he shows up, he's a right on time God. He shifts, he turns things around for you. He shifts it in your favor. He turns it around in your favor. He shifts it in your favor. He turns it around in your favor. He turns everything around for you. He turns it around and he works things out for your good because that's the kind of God that we serve. So don't you ever think 
that God has forgotten you. You may have gone through hell in the family. You may have gone through hell on the job. You may have gone through hell with your finances. You may have gone through hell with your children. But do not ever think that God has forgotten your labor. Maybe you're a preacher today. You're watching me. You're saying, you know what? I poured out everything that I that I have. I'm leading while I'm bleeding. And, and it just seems like what I'm giving out today is not enough. Listen to this. God has not forgotten your sacrifice. The Bible said he's not unrighteous to forget your labor of love as you minister and do minister to his people. He's not forgotten you. Don't you ever think that God has forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. The sacrifice that you have made for your children. He's not forgotten you. I'm telling you, he's not forgotten you. And there are many people today who are going through this thing of, of dissatisfaction. You're frustrated today. And you're wondering why people, why, why am I going through this? <laughs> you're going through it because you have not thought about how good God is to you. Miss Willow Robinson is watching me today, so she knows I've been writing this book entitled, Why Am I Not Happy? And I found out that America itself is not happy at all. Since 2009, America has been slowly declining in its happiness, even though finances of the country has increased. So finances cannot be the reason that people are unhappy. The, the decline has started to slowly decline because of who in it, who's in office, but this was taking place before that. So people are not unhappy because of who's not in off, who's in office, but people are unhappy simply because of the way they think. People don't know their purpose anymore. They don't know the reason they exist. They work their fingers to the bone, and yet and still they're still unhappy. So America itself is dissatisfied, and you are no different. Many people who are watching me today, you are unhappy. You're dissatisfied. You're dissatisfied with the way you look. You're dissatisfied with your body. You're dissatisfied with your job, you're dissatisfied with your house, your car, your clothes, you're dissatisfied with your kids, and you're not realizing that happiness does not come from people. It comes from the way you think. How do you know this? The Bible says to us, here Paul is standing in the presence of King Agrippa, and he's getting ready to testify about how he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, and he says to King Agrippa, he says, I think myself happy. So my happiness is a result of how I think. When you start to think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul really going to start to crowd anyway because you're going to realize he has not forgotten me. He's not forgotten me. He's not forgotten me. I know it feels that way. It looks like that. It sounds like that. But listen, he has not forgotten you. Well, old saying is when one door closes, another one opens for you. What is God doing for you in this season of your life? You may be in your night season but may I tell you that morning is about to arise in your life and when morning comes it's the sign and the signal of a new day baby you have just stepped over into a new day don't you let the devil tell you another day that God is not for you the psalmist said if God be for you <laughs> who could be against you can't nobody be against you when God is for you he has not forgotten you but pastor I'm starting my business is not producing at the level that it's supposed to be listen to this could it be that maybe God is working out some things right now that you don't know nothing about? <laughs> Could it be that God is going before you and making your crooked path straight? Could it be that God is going before you and repositioning some people so that you can bump into them so that they can help you? Listen to this. He's not forgotten you. He has already blessed you from the foundation of the world. There is not a new thing that God is about to do for you. Every new thing that God has done, has, every new thing that God is doing for you has already been done. You just got to tap into it today. Today is my day. God has not forgotten you. I was talking to my wife on yesterday. I said, we, we serve a God that you could wake up today and have a negative balance in your bank account and get home 15 minutes later and be a millionaire. That's the kind of God we serve. We can't count him out because we're going through some stuff. We can't count him out because it looked bad. We can't count him out because we don't know how it's going to turn around, how he's going to work it out. We can't count him out because he has not forgotten us. He knows where you are. He knows what to do. The Bible says when you have been tried, he's going to bring you forth as pure gold. Could it be that maybe you're going through your trying season and God knows what to do in the midst of your trying season, that you are not going to fail the test because he's prepared you? Don't you lose hope. Don't you lose your mind because it seems as if you're in this by yourself. You are not in this by yourself. You are coming out of this. you coming out of this. I need you to grab a hold of this and just say I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Whatever it is, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this health challenge. I'm coming out of this sickness and disease. I'm coming out of this relationship, this bad relationship. I'm coming out of this situation with my children. I'm coming out of this financial dilemma. I'm coming out of this. You are coming out of this because he has not forgotten you. See, and God usually shows up when you least expect him to show up. 
You been can you can you see my fever shelf being down in the loader bar? He's leaving he's living beneath poverty. Half the time he don't even know where he's gonna get his next meal. I'm he's royalty and he's living beneath his privileges. Can you imagine him living as a, he, he, he's, he's supposed to be in the lineage of being king? If Saul dies, then, Dave, then, Josh, then Jonathan would be king. And if Jonathan would die, then Mephibosheth would be king. He's in the lineage of being king. And all of a sudden now, here he is, he's living beneath his privileges. Can you imagine how frustrated and irritated he must be? I'm royalty, but I'm living beneath my privileges. And I can, I can imagine he done lost all hope. But before you know it, here come God showing up to rescue him out of his mess. He don't know the day or the hour when it, when, when it was going to take place, but it showed up. God has not forgotten you. I'm telling you today, he's not forgotten you. When he showed up at Mephibosheth's door, Mephibosheth says, am I a dead dog that you would come and see me? See, he had already, already resigned his thought process to seeing himself as a dead dog. But what he didn't know is that God never saw him like that. Some of you look at yourself in the mirror and you discount you and you count you out. You count yourself as being a failure. You count yourself as being a person who's never, who never made anything or never did anything, who's never accomplished anything. You counted you out and you have forgotten that God has not forgotten you and that he does not see you like that. Stop discounting you. Stop counting you out. Stop talking down about you. Stop belittling you. Stop bringing up all of the things that you did not accomplish and the things that you did not do. Things you did not do. Stop doing that to yourself, because when you do that to yourself, you deny what God has already done for you. What has He done for me? He went to the cross for me. He died on the cross for me. When I start to deny who I am, I deny what He's done for me. When I deny who I am, I give the devil a license to intervene in my life and run roughshod in my life because I made a decision that that's not what I am. I look at myself completely different than the way God sees me. And because you do it, you lose everything that God has for you. Can you imagine all of the miracles, all of the blessings, all of the breakthrough that God has for you is on hold because you look at yourself differently? There was a brother that I told him, I said, man, stop preparing to die, but prepare to live. And he's looking at me like, what? Stop preparing to die and prepare to live. When you prepare to live, you invite every promise that God has into your life. You invite every breakthrough. You invite every open door. You invite all the love. You invite all the joy to come into your life because you are preparing to live. When you prepare to live, you set an open door before you. So my words to you this morning is prepare to live. God has not forgotten you. It may look like it. <laughs> it may seem like that he's he's with you. He's not with you. It may look like he's not with you. But listen at this. Looks can be deceiving. They can be deceiving. God can turn your situation around at the drop of a hat. At the drop of a dime, he can turn it around. You just got to say, today, Lord, is the day that I believe you for my turnaround. Today is the day that I believe you for my shield. I believe that you're going to turn this thing around for me. The psalmist said, weeping may it do it for a night. The joy coming in the morning. It's, it's your morning time, baby. It's your morning season. It's your new day. It's your new open door. It's your new opportunity. Get your joy back. Get your happiness back. Get your swag back. Get your confidence back. Get it back. You got so much to offer this world, but you can't offer it if you're wondering, is he there for me? The Bible said God made a promise to you. He'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Bible said he'll be with you even until the end of the world. That's a promise that he made. So God is a covenant keeping promise. He's a covenant keeping God. He has to keep his promise. He cannot deny himself. To not keep his promise is to deny who he is. God is an integral God. He's a God of character. He's a God who does what he says he's going to do. Said he wouldn't leave you. So you got to believe that. You got to trust that. The Bible says he's not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, that's what he's going to do. You can take his words to the bank. Your situation may be bleak right now, but God knows how to show up and turn it around for you. He knows how to shift the momentum for you. He knows how to do it. He knows how to do it. So let him shift it for you. Let him turn it around for you. Stop having a pity party. Stop wallowing in your mess. I'm going through these health challenges. Every time I turn around, I'm at the doctor's office. I want to go to the surgery for this. I got to go. To Be grateful that you are alive today. You are alive today. Somebody went through what you went through and they're not here today, but you are still here. Any day above ground is a good day. You serve a great God who has not forgotten you. He loves you too much to forget you. <laughs>
<laughs> he loves you too much to walk away from you. Even when you've been tore up on the floor, even when you messed up, even when you did some things you were not supposed to do, he still loved you too much to walk away from you. <laughs> he hasn't forgotten you. Just hold your course. Stand your ground. Be bold enough to declare and decree today is my breakthrough day. Be bold enough to declare and decree that today is my turnaround day. Be bold enough to declare it and decree that today is the day that I come out of this mess. I'll not feel like this another day in my life. I'll not feel lonely another day in my life. I'll not feel disappointed another day in my life. I'll, feel, I'll not feel dissatisfied. I'll not feel like I let people down. But I'm going to stand boldly today and say, God, you promised me. And I know you're a God who cannot lie. You can't lie. You can't lie. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody today. You about ready to throw in the towel because you don't know how long. You don't know when it's going to happen for you. And right now you're becoming weary in your body right now. Listen to this. You can't be weary in well-doing. The Bible said for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. You got to hold your course. You can't be weary in your mind. You can't be weary in your body. But you got to hold your course. You got to stand your ground and you got to declare that today is my day. It's my day. It's my day. It is my day. It's my turnaround day. It's my shifting day. It's God re releasing favor in my life. He's leaning in my direction today. You got you to gotta just say that every single day. You got to say it every day. You got to believe it every single day. He has not forgotten you. He's still there for you. <laughs> oh, my God. I pray I touched somebody's life this morning. Listen to this. These messages that I teach and talk about in the morning, they be for me just as well as you. I have to go back and I have to hold on to these things too because this is the kind of God we serve. Hey, well, as he's ministering, ministering through me to you, man, he's touching my life as well because I go through challenges just like everybody else. And I got, to, I got to keep the faith. I got to hold my course. I got to stand my ground. I have to boldly declare and decree. When the odds seem as if they are stacked against me, I still have to boldly declare what thus saith the Lord. I came to tell you today when the odds are stacked against you, <laughs> Boldly declare what the word of God says. He ain't left you. He has not left you. He has not left you. In the face of opposition, you got to declare the word of God. He has not left me. He's not left you. He's not left you. He's not forgotten you. <laughs> Let me give a shout out to our Instagram audience today. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you so very much for tuning in. I thank you so much. Hey, shout out to Miss Melina Ferguson Clark. Shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophie, who's watching today. Uh, man, I missed somebody on here. Shout out to Miss Willie, Miss Willie Francis Hill, who's on. Miss Jackie Nelson, who's on today. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Miss Shirley Powell, Miss Irene Holmes, good to see you. Miss JL is watching today. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being on today. Hey, today is a great day. It really is. It's a great day. It's an amazing day. Man, God has not forgotten you. <laughs> I got to pray for you. And once I pray for you, I got to give somebody their day. Listen, y'all share this video. Y'all start a watch party, all right? Let other people see this video. Let their lives be transformed and changed. Uh, let everybody know that, man, there's a word for you that would encourage you, that will encourage your faith and starve your doubts. It's here every morning. Just get here, all right? Shout out to Miss Alicia Wolf, who's with us this morning, too. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being on. I'm starting to get all these cowboy fans on my, on my in the backyard. I don't know what that's all about. You know, maybe they're tired of losing, so they want to come be with a winner. You know, 49ers are always winners. <laughs> hey, shout out to Miss Sherika Nicole, who's rocking with us this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today. <laughs> let me pray, and then we're going to give somebody that day. Don't go until we give you your day, all right? So let me pray for you, all right? All right? So I'm praying this morning. Really, I'm, I'm really praying this morning that you would not give up and lose hope but that you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has not forgotten you, all right? Shout out to Miss Judy Pitts, who's watching this morning, too. So let me pray for you, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for the grace and the mercy, God, that you've released in our lives. I thank you for new opportunities and new open doors. I thank you, Lord, for just helping us to hold our course and stand our ground, God, because you've not, forgiven, you've not given up on us. Even in the midst of our mishaps, our mistakes, and our mess-ups, God, you've still been there for us. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that your word said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And your word said, our lips should praise you. So, Father, we praise you today, and we thank you for everything that you have done for us. I pray this morning, God, 
for those specifically who have businesses this morning. I ask you in Jesus' name, God, that you would open new doors for them. Take their businesses to new levels in you, oh God. Give them new clients and new opportunities, God. For those, God, who have been called, God, to be speakers, to be motivational speakers, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless their tongue. Make their tongue the tongue, the pen of a ready writer so that they may write upon the hearts and minds of people, God, so that they may be encouraged to continue to keep moving forward so that they may not give up today. For every person who's watching me today, who's at their wit's end, God, with their life, with their children, with their finances, even with their job, help them to hold their course and stand their ground and not give up, God, because you yourself, God, has not given up on us. You have not forgotten us. For those who are facing health challenges today, I pray in Jesus' name for a turnaround in their physical health now. And God, I thank you right now that even as I'm praying now, God, you're working a miracle out in their bodies now in the name of Jesus. For those who have cancer and watching me now, I speak to the cancer in your body. I command the cancer to leave you now in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you that every nerve and every cell lines up with your will and with your way. And God, I thank you right now that your people are bouncing back today. Even as I pray, God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I lift up my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity. I pray for my town's healing today, God. Father, for you know the, the soul that was just lost from my town. I ask in Jesus' name that you would comfort his family, that you would comfort his classmates, but most of all, God, that you would let the town know that you are still God and that you still covers. And God, I thank you. I speak to the spirit of death that has come over my town. Death, your assignment has been canceled. You will not murder another person from my town. Not another person will be murdered from my town. I pray a canopy over my town, a peace and prosperity and protection over my town now in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you that even as I'm praying now, your angels have been dispatched to cover and to keep my town. And God, I thank you that it is so. You've been you sent to cover and to keep the people and the children of my town. And God, I thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise for it. Now, Father, we lift up the Delta as a whole. We pray for peace and prosperity to flow like a river throughout the Delta. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for the country of Belize right now. I pray for your peace and prosperity, your healing and your deliverance to flow throughout the town now, throughout the country now. Bless the works of the hands of every Belizean citizen who's watching me today. And God, I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Hey, get ready to get your seat in the ground. Get ready to get your seat in the ground today. Got to give somebody their day. Get your seat in the ground. Go to our website, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Again, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seat in the ground today. All right. Uh, you can give your tithe, your offerings, or you could also give uh, to the pastor's compensation. That's how my wife and I live. But listen, get your seat in the ground today. If you want, you can sow directly to me through the cash app. Just go to the, uh, just the cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor Perry. Get your seat in the ground, all right? Hey, shout out to my little brother, Timothy Price, who's watching today. Alan Mitchell Thomas is watching today. Good to see you, my brother. But listen, I got to give somebody their day. Today is Miss Nadine Lewis's day. Whatever Miss Nadine wants, she gets whatever she needs, you supply. It is her day today. Love on Miss Nadine. It is her day she deserves it. She deserves the day. And today is Miss Irene Holmes Day. Whatever Miss Irene wants, she gets whatever she needs. You supply. It is her day today. So y'all love on Miss Irene. Y'all love on Miss Nadine Lewis. It is their day today. All right. Hey, God bless you. Don't forget, get your seat in the ground. Remember, we said we don't believe in Team I. We believe in Team We. We are a team. So for every soul we win, for every life we change, for every person who gets built up, you get credit for it because you're a part of the team. So let's continue on to keep on loving, supporting, and caring so that this broadcast can take people's lives to a whole nother level. All right? I love y'all. I'll see y'all again tomorrow. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Be blessed. Oh, don't forget, make sure that you're at Jackie Nelson's house this Friday night. Be at Jackie Nelson's house this Friday night. I think she got a house in Morgan City and wanted it to be to get down to Jackie Nelson's house. There's going to be fish fries at both house at midnight. Just go there. She's going to barbecue. She's going to fish fry all night long. Get to her house. If you if you coming from Memphis and you don't have a ride, she'll send the car to go get you. That's how that's how she ball, that's how she balling. She got you under control. She got you covered. So y'all look out for her. She's going to take care of you. And then the next morning, they're going to be giving out haircuts and barbecue. And then the next day, all of it is free at Jackie Nelson's house. All right. Love y'all. We'll see y'all again tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' day.